Hey everyone, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and welcome to part two of my Logic Pro 10 101 course. In this video, I wanna show you how to record audio with a microphone. We'll be double tracking acoustic guitar and then overdubbing vocals. So in this video, I'll start by showing how to prep and set up your Logic project for recording. I'll explain what IO buffer size is and show you how to adjust your recording file type, bit depth, and sample rate. And I'll explain some basic audio theory along the way, but I'm gonna save a lot of that for a really in-depth audio theory video for the 201 series. So first, let's go to Logic Pro 10, Preferences, Audio. So before I showed you that this is where you can select your audio interface for your input and output device, we wanna make sure that our audio interface is selected as our input device, because this is the device that we're gonna plug our microphone into. Now let's adjust the IO buffer size. You wanna make sure that the buffer size is set to a lower setting, something like 64 or 32 samples. The reason why you wanna keep this low when you're recording is that the IO buffer controls the amount of latency in the signal, but really the latency is just a byproduct of your processor processing and inputting and outputting all of this audio and the analog to digital conversion on input, and then the digital to analog conversion on output. Basically, with a lower buffer size, that information is processed faster, but in smaller chunks. So this is a more CPU-intensive task. If you pull up the buffer size to something higher, this processes more slowly, but in larger chunks, and it's a less CPU-intensive task. So what does this mean from a practical standpoint? Well, a lower buffer size should be used whenever you're recording to minimize latency. If you use a higher buffer size when you're recording, you'll hear a noticeable delay between what you play or sing in the mic and what you're monitoring in your headphones, which can be distracting. Logic even shows you the resulting latency of your buffer size choice. So something like 32 will result in 5.6 milliseconds of round trip latency, and something like 1024 will result in 46.9 milliseconds of latency, which is gonna be really noticeable. You want to use a higher buffer size when you're doing more CPU intensive tasks like mixing where you're adding a lot of plugins and effects and instruments. If you use a lower buffer size when you've got a lot going on in your session, your project will actually stop playing and you'll get a system overload message because you've maxed out all of your CPU power. The next thing we need to do is choose our recording file type and bit depth. So for this you're going to click on the recording tab and you can adjust your recording file type here. Now there's three options, AIFF, WAVE, and CAF. I usually go with WAVE, but it really doesn't matter because all three of these are uncompressed format, so it's not really going to affect the quality at all. It's just that WAVE is the most universal of these three. You can also adjust uh, your bit depth here. Now with this checked, you'll record at 24-bit. Um, if you uncheck this, your bit depth will be 16-bit. Without getting too deep, uh, bit depth adjusts the dynamic range of your recording between the floor noise and the peak signal. All recordings, even digital ones, have inherent noise in them. And with most digital recordings, the noise is just so low that you don't hear it unless you amplify the signal several times. So a 16-bit recording will have a higher floor noise than a 24-bit recording. I always choose 24-bit, and there's really no reason to not use 24-bit unless you're really hurting for storage space, um, because 24-bit files are just marginally larger than 16-bit files. There's also a misconception that dynamic range in bit depth means louder. That's absolutely not true. A 16 and a 24-bit recording have the same peak volume level. Think of it as more dynamic range and more room to grow downward toward the floor noise, not more room to grow upward. Next, let's adjust our sample rate. So to do this, we need to go to our project settings. So we're gonna go to File, Project Settings, and we're gonna go to Audio. So you'll see a number of options for sample rate here. You may have less options than I do as well, because the sample rate is completely dependent upon your audio interface's capabilities. Most interfaces nowadays can record all the way up to 192 kilohertz. Some can only record up to 96. And if you don't have an audio interface plugged in, you may only see 44.1 and 48. So in simple terms, the sample rate is the number of samples per second taken during the analog to digital conversion process. So as analog audio enters your input on your interface, imagine the converter taking several thousand snapshots per second of the audio signal. So this takes a completely analogous electrical signal and converts it into a discrete series of ones and zeros in digital format. 
Now in practical terms, this affects the frequency range of your recording, particularly the high frequencies. So if you have a higher sample rate, high frequency instruments like orchestral strings, heavy distortion and overdrive on guitar, higher harmonics in the human voice, and especially cymbals on drum set recordings will sound more crisp and more clear. I typically go with 48K because I find that there's a pretty noticeable difference, at least to my ear, between 44.1 and 48. I find that there's, I personally can't hear much of a difference between 88.2 all the way up to 192. Although I do hear a, a marginal difference between 48 and 88.2, it's just not worth um, the increased file size. Going from 48K up to 88.2 almost doubles the file size, and going from 48 to 96 does double the file size. So to me, it's not really worth it. And also using higher sample rates is more taxing on your CPU. So I'm just gonna go with 48. All right, so now we're all set to record. What I'm gonna do is create a few audio tracks. And remember to get to this dialog, you can press Option Command N. So what I'm gonna do is select audio track, and then I'm going to create three total audio tracks. Now the reason why I'm creating three tracks is I'm going to double track my acoustic guitar left and right to get a, a bigger sound out of it, and then I have one track for the vocals. So to rename audio tracks, or really any tracks, all you have to do is double click on the name and then type in whatever name you want. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call this guitar L because this is going to be my left guitar. We're going to double track them left and right. Now instead of double clicking on the next track down, you can just hit the tab key and it'll automatically jump to change the name of the next track. So now I'll call this guitar R for guitar right. Tab again, and I'm just gonna call this vocals. Another little thing you can do is just cosmetic, um, is you can right click on any of your tracks and you can choose an icon. So I can go up to guitar here, choose a picture of an acoustic guitar. Actually, it looks like a classical guitar. There we go, acoustic guitar. We'll do the same thing here. And then for vocals, I can just choose a little icon of a singer here. All right, and before we start recording, let me just lower my tempo just slightly from 120 down to 118. So when I try to record enable this track, we get an error message that says there's no input source selected. And if you come down to the channel strip, you can see that there's no input source selected. So what you do is you click on the input tab, go down to input, and then choose the appropriate input that you plugged your microphone into. So for me, I plugged my mic into channel one on my audio interface. Now you'll see that the meter's moving when I play guitar, but you don't hear anything. Um, and even when we record enable the track, we don't hear anything. So what you have to do is click on the I button, the input monitor button. Now notice when I hit record and start playing, you can see a waveform being recorded, but you don't hear anything. And this is because when you're recording, by default, you still have to have that input monitoring button selected. Now that's really kind of a nuisance, but there is a workaround for it. So you're gonna go up to Logic Pro 10, Preferences, Audio, and this time we're gonna to go to the General tab, and we're gonna uncheck the Input Monitoring Only for Focus Track and Record Enabled Tracks. Now this is kind of weird, because it almost seems like it does the opposite of what it says it does. So now when I just arm the track, it also input monitors the track. You would think that when you check this box that that would happen, not unchecking it, but whatever. So before we record, I'm gonna turn on my count in and I'm gonna choose click while recording for my metronome option. You can also go to the metronome settings to adjust the tuning and tone and volume of the metronome. So I'm gonna hit R to record and let's track our first guitar take. So before we track the second guitar, I'm going to pan the left guitar over to the left, 
and pan the right guitar over to the right to create that big double tracked stereo image that I want. And now let's track the vocals. <clears throat> <coughs> All right, guys, I'm not the best singer, but I'll do my best. Last night I went home without you, driving in the pouring rain. I've got so many things to say to you, but I never say them in the right way. Sometimes I feel like giving. But then I see your smile There's something about you Beautiful woman That I can't get out of my mind All right, now that we've got our recording, let's take a moment to do some quick edits to clean this up and also uh, add some effects to enhance it. So the first thing I want to do is I want to trim off all this talking here um, at the beginning of the vocal take. What we're going to do is we're going to actually turn off our snap mode before we were using the smart mode in the previous video to snap things to the nearest bar or beat on uh, on the grid. So I'm actually going to turn off snap completely so we can freely edit this. Now remember, if you hover over the left or right side of, of a region, you can click and drag in and this will trim up that region. Now I'm going to do the same to the to the guitars as well because I believe you can hear me breathing right before the take starts. Yeah, you can hear me sniffling. So we're going to drag over both of these now, and you can actually trim up multiple uh, regions at the same time. What I typically like to do is I don't like to have audio just pop in like this. I like to do a quick little uh, fade at the beginning of it. So it's, it, it more or less fades in just really quickly as opposed to just popping in. Sometimes if you uh, do edits freely like this without fades, you can hear pops and clicks in the signal. Uh, albeit sometimes they're just very quiet ones, but they can they can still cause pops and clicks in the signal. Now there's two ways to do this. We could use the uh, actual fade tool, but since we really haven't been talking about any of the tools yet, we're not going to do that. Another way to do it is to use the built-in fade shortcut um, that goes along with using the pointer tool. Now your pointer pointer tool should be in your left click slot here by default. If it's not, make sure to change that. If you Press Control and Shift, and then start somewhere on the inside of the region and drag to the outside of the region. It'll create a little fade for you. Also, what you can do is you can drag over multiple regions and create multiple fades. So that's really cool. Um, I'm going to do the same for the front end of my vocals here. And then on the back end, for the vocals, I'm going to create a, kind of a quicker fade. But then for the... Um, the guitars, in fact, I'm going to go ahead and turn on smart mode here. So my trimming snaps to the grid. I'm going to snap this to measure 23. And I'm going to create a bit of a longer fade on these. So let's give that a listen. Last night I went home without you. Cool, so it's, it's clean now, but... It's kind of a, a dull recording. Let's, let's spice this up with some plugins. Now, there's a couple different ways you can add plugins, and this is in no way like a mixing tutorial yet. We're just adding a few plugins here just to enhance their performance. Um, on the vocals, let's go ahead and let's open up our library up here. Remember, you can press Y as well to open up the library. And the library has a whole bunch of pre-made um, effects for different instruments. Uh, it's like an actually chain of uh, it's a chain of multiple effects. So the one I'm going to use for the voice, I'm going to go to the voice category here, and I'm going to go over to classic vocal. Now this adds an EQ, a compressor, another EQ, a tape delay, even uses a pedal board effect. And this bus here is probably going over to a reverb. Um, let's just solo out just the vocals and let's listen to them by themselves. Last night I went home without you. So I like that sound, but I don't like the tape delay that they added to it. So what you can do is on any of these plugins, first of all, you can click toward the middle of the plugin, insert, and it'll open up the plugin itself. You can tweak its settings. I don't want the delay at all. I want to take it completely off. 
So there's two ways to do this. You can hover over the left side of that plugin insert and click this button here and it will disable the plugin. Or you can just completely remove it from the plugin chain by clicking on the little up and down arrows here, clicking and holding, and going down to no plugin. And you can actually remove that plugin completely. So let's see what this sounds like without that tape delay in there. Last night I went home without you. Much better. All right, so next let's do something with our guitars. They're kind of dull sounding right now, and I want to give them a little bit more sparkle. And we can do that with just an EQ. Um, so let's add um, a plugin individually this time, as opposed to using um, a whole collection of plugins from the library. So I'm going to select my left guitar. I've got it soloed right now, by the way, just so we can hear it by itself. I'm going to go down to here where it says audio effects. And from this, I'm going to click on it, go down to EQ, and we're going to go to channel EQ. We'll select mono. Now, even if you don't know what any of this does yet, you can still sort of like click on these little nodes and you can pull them around. You can play with the frequency of the signal. And so you can still kind of play around with it just graphically, even if you don't know what these numbers mean. But you can also select presets from up here. So I'm going to go down to guitar and let's try the one that says acoustic rhythm guitar. Let's try that out. So that's a preset they've come up with. Um, let's listen to that, and I'm going to click here and then click it back on. This is the bypass button. It bypasses the plugin, and then you can turn it back on. So you can sort of A, B the signal before and after. So it definitely improved it. Uh, it's still kind of thin in the low end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this little orange node here, and I'm going to pull up the low end on my guitar just a little bit. So again, you don't even have to know what that is or know what any of these numbers mean. You can still play with the signal and you can make it brighter in the high end if you wanted to, you know, a little deeper in the low end like we just did. So the channel EQ is very intuitive. Okay, so let's say we want to take this EQ setting that we just made, we want to apply it to the other guitar as well. Well, what we can do is we can go into our mixer. Let me go ahead and solo the right guitar as well. The mixer, the way you can access it easily is you can hit X on your keyboard, and it'll pull up a little separate window down here for the mixer. You can also hit Command-2, and that'll pull up a separate floating window. Now, this little red light here is saying that the track is clipping. Now, the track isn't actually clipping during normal playback. It clipped because I was playing around with the EQ and I added too much gain, um, just dinking around with it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this channel EQ setting over to the other guitar. So it's very simple. You just hold Option and drag it over to the other track, and it makes a duplicate of it. And you can even see a little graphic of it up here. So let's play back just the guitars. All right, sounds good. Let's play this back with the vocals now. I've got so many things to say to you, but I never say them in the right way. Sometimes I feel like giving up, but then I see your smile. There's something about you, beautiful woman, that I can't get out of my mind. All right, there you go. We made our first basic recording using one microphone and three tracks. Um, moving forward, we'll do some more um, recording videos. I want to show you guys a cool feature called Quick Swipe Comping, which allows you to put together uh, multiple takes to create one really good take. Because my vocal take here isn't that great. What if we had four or five different takes and we were able to piece together a composite take from those five takes? Well, you'll end up with a better vocal recording. So we'll talk about that uh, in another video. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, uh, check out my social media. I am on Twitter, I'm on Facebook, and I'm on Patreon. So check me out there. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching.